Jason Bourne is the fourth Bourne movie starring Matt Damon as the character we know and love. Now, I wouldn't say personally that I am a huge Bourne fan, but I do like the original trilogy of Identity, Supremacy, and Ultimatum. And I'm going to get this out of the way before I continue this review any farther. You need to have seen those three movies before coming into this one. If you did not enjoy or did not watch the original trilogy, there is no way you can possibly enjoy this one too. And that's why for most of this review I'm going to be comparing it to the other movies in the franchise about what I liked about this movie and what I didn't like. So let's start off with what I really, really liked about this movie. Just like the previous Bourne movies, the action is absolutely incredible. There's not as much of it this time around, but there are a lot longer sequences and all of them were really, really fun. And probably my favorite part was that in the previous movies there was a lot of shaky cam, especially Supremacy and Ultimatum. And while the shaky cam was definitely tolerable, it's not something that I would say enhanced the movie in any way. It just made the action harder to follow, and it sometimes ruined the action scenes of those movies. And there is more shaky cam in Jason Bourne, but it is nowhere near as prevalent. There are two chase scenes in this movie, and there might be a little bit of shaky cam here or there, but overall, it's very well directed and you can understand what's going on, which was a huge plus for me. I also really enjoyed a lot of the new characters that came this time around. The first character that really stood out to me was Heather Lee, uh, Alicia Vikander's character. I really liked her character, you didn't really know exactly where her allegiance lies, and her transition is very natural compared to some of the other characters in the series. She did a great performance, and I loved her character for the most part. And the second character that I really, really was surprised by was a character simply known as the Asset, Vincent Cassell's character. Now, he's basically another one of the evil Treadstone agents that Bourne has to take on, but overall, I think he is one of the best in the series. And this is for two main reasons. The first one is that he's prevalent throughout the entire movie. It's not just this one guy who comes in that Bourne takes out. He's this dominating force that's seen throughout the entire movie and is like the perfect foil character to Bourne. And the second thing I really liked about his character compared to the other Treadstone agents was that he actually had a motive. All the other Treadstone agents were extremely one-dimensional and were just there for the action. And they kind of just go along with whatever the CIA wants them to do to Bourne. But this one actually has his own personal motive against Bourne, and I thought that made his reason for being against Born feel a lot more natural. And of course, all the returning characters are absolutely great. Matt Damon as Jason Bourne is fantastic once again. Nikki also returns in this movie, and I thought her character was really well done. But for the most part, that's all I liked about this movie, so let's get to what I really didn't like. And all of the issues I have with this movie come exclusively from the story. Now, it's not terrible. It's tolerable. It's not anything you can look at and say, oh, well, that's the worst thing I've ever seen done as a movie story before. It's fine, but there's two problems I have with this. The first is that there's this subplot that's prevalent throughout the entire movie, and it's so pointless and undercut that it doesn't need to be in this movie. They try to basically connect this subplot to what's going on in the main plot, but it just doesn't work. And the subplot isn't even given enough scenes for it to even be important in any way. And even the main plot I felt was really lacking in some areas. It's kind of having two main plots going on at the same time, and it's hard to get behind it. In the previous Bourne movies, we always had the CIA going after Bourne and Bourne running away, and then the second story of Bourne trying to figure out who he was. That's how it was in all of those other movies, and it was done fantastic in all those movies. But this one attempts to crossbreed those two stories into one plot, and it just doesn't work. It becomes a jumbled mess of Bourne trying to learn something more about himself, and then this other project that the CIA is pushing for, and overall they mix these two together so horribly that it makes Bourne's motive feel unknown. You just don't understand where he's coming from this time around. And by comparison to the original trilogy, it's severely lacking in both of those plots, even if you isolated them and expanded upon them, maybe. So it basically just makes the story a big, jumbled-up mess of a pointless subplot and two main plots that aren't given enough time. And overall, it was the story in the end that ruined the, this movie for me. 
I still enjoyed it. The action scenes were awesome, and I loved many of the characters, and there were some really good thriller scenes throughout all of this. But when the story was so good in the other three movies, this movie just feels lacking in so many areas. And overall, it just didn't feel natural. And the story didn't take any big risks like the original trilogy did. Now, if this eventually means that we can get another Bourne movie coming out in a few years that's really, really good, maybe this was worth it. But as it stands right now, the story is ultimately what ruins Jason Bourne. If you want to have a movie with really good action sequences, this movie has you covered in some areas. But overall, I just feel the plot is an absolute mess for me to be able to sit through all of that to get back to the action scenes that were really good. If you're a huge porn fan, definitely go see this movie. If you did not watch any of the previous board movies, don't go see this. And if you were only okay with the first three board movies, I would say skip this one entirely. But that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of A Gamer's Movie Review, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.